All right. So before we move forward, uh, let's take a step back and then see what we did so far. We managed to create an application page, isn't it? Named Partner Management, and we managed to add components in it, right? So far, we added four components, isn't it? So we created Lightning Web Components and we ensured that it is it can be used only in the application page. How did we do it? We used uh, a configuration file. Right, and uh, we managed to set the targets, right? We exposed it to true so that it can be used in the org number two. We managed uh, to give the target as application page, which means this particular lightning web component can only be used in the application page, not anywhere else. So we did that. We added nested components, yes, back in the master container. We did add other components, right? As child components, partner search and partner search result. We did that, correct? And remember, we followed the kebab casing naming convention as well. That we did. And also, uh, we are going to learn this decorators now, or we're going to use decorators now. And also, we used uh, base lightning web components uh, that helps us to make our page responsive in nature, right? So we applied that in partner search HTML where we use lightning layout, right? It uses behind the scenes grid system, which divides the page, right, into two, into in equally, you know, 12 parts. And uh, we use the size attribute to say, okay, my column needs this fix at six, uh, six, uh, you know, size. And uh, the other, other off, you know, will take the, the remaining size, which is six. So I can, I can set the size, you know, fix set size using this property, right? So this way I can able to, set my page you know responsive enough to access both in desktop or rather right across devices desktop tablets mobile browser etc etc so and then you know wherever needed we are using a salesforce lightning design system right and then we um, uh, we are applying the right css classes to ensure that look and feel of our application right it's great so Going forward, we're going to focus on uh, building this combo box and also we'll introduce some additional code to get this, um, get an action created for uh, um, these, you know, buttons, okay. So talking about this combo box, right? Uh, so very simple. Uh, let me just uh, put this on the right so that we can just cross check the code side by side, yeah. So as you can just see, there is a property called options and it has a, an array of objects, label and a value. And this is what it's getting, uh, you know, uh, binded to the combo box. So if I change this to something else, let's say tech partner, let's say uh, Mar tech partner, let's say this is as, you know, legal partner. So when I change the label, Okay, this is what I will just see on the screen, but behind the scenes, uh, I can have this value used for other operations, especially when sending data to the backend, right? So X113. So I just made a change in this, uh, in the options, and then let's deploy and then see what, ha what happens in the page. So go back to the org, refresh, I think it is cached. Let's remove the cache and reload. Yeah, you can just see this, right? Tech partner, mark tech partner, etc. etc. So we know that now an array of objects is what we have to pass it on to the combo box to get it, you know, to get it um, binded to the combo box, right? So one thing whenever you use combo box, right, we have to remember this. Uh, if I go back to the combo box example. Yeah, if you go back to the specification for once and then take a look at this attribute options, which is the mandatory or required one, right? It clearly says that each option or each item that gets binded to the combo box should have the following attributes, label and value. That is what you are seeing on the code, label and value. If you change this to something else like this, right? Let's see what happens. Let's deploy the source and then see what happens to the output so let me refresh the page and you can see an empty combo box right so we have to be very careful when you work with combo box ensure that this 
there's you know the key and the keys are label and value so this is important because you know the next step that we are going to do needs a little additional coding before we bind the data on the you know on the screen and this is what we just did so when you work with combo box ensure that each option has this label and value of keys okay so what is the next step that we are going to do we are going to bring data from the database for which we need data you know we need to write an apex method the reason is uh, I want to bring all the channel partners right here, right? So how many partner types I have? I have uh, eight partner types. So I need to query partner types custom object, get all the data and then bring it to the screen and then, you know, bring it to the component and then bind it to the combo box. So this is, these are the steps that I need to do, right? So for which we need to write an apex method. So the two things we should remember when we write apex method. One is ensure that our enabled annotation is used for an apex method to use in lightning web component and also set cacheable equal to true so if you go back to our code i do have a class file so this is what you know it's indicated right in the notes so i have a static public method so this is going to you know make a call to an SQL query and then this will simply get the id and name name of the name of the partner types id and name and that is what you know written back to the back to the caller so this is a simple you know apex method right and this is important so unless you say explicitly annotate the method as aura enabled you cannot use it in lightning web component okay so how do i use it in lightning web component let's see how to how to how to how would you do that so back in the search there are three steps involved one is we have to import wire decorated then we have to import the apex method that we just created and we have to make a call to the method then process the output the output could be either having data from the database or it could turn into error right so we do have an explicit system properties called the data and error to to make it available for us okay so let's go to the step one so right here import the wire decorator and uh, step two import apex method which is also fairly simple we do have modules written in the um, lightning web combined engine so i'm going to give uh, an alias name fetch partner types is the alias name from within single quotes i'll use at the rate apex slash see i can get the partner search this is the name of the class file and this is the method name right so this way i can able to import uh, the apex method that's it and then the step three is this i will make a call to an apex method using at the rate yeah step three import wire decorator uh, import apex method and make a call to the method using uh, at the rate wire so this will take you know the the apex method as uh, the first parameter and the second one takes any arguments that we need to pass to the apex method in our case you know there are there are no parameters we need to bring all the partner types right so i'm not going to give any uh, any uh, any parameters or pass any parameters to the method okay and as you can just see i'm just referring fetch partner types which is the alias name or friendly name so uh, you know whatever the name that you have given in the import yeah just ensure that that is given here and then let's process the output so i wanted to assign the output of this wire method uh, you know to a function and this function as will take error and data system properties as i said earlier right so when you make a call to an apex method two things can happen either it returns a data or error and and the lightning web command engine you know as um, default system properties with the name data and error data will hold the records that are being retrieved from the database and error will carry any data just in case if the call did not work right so let's try to get the data printed back and then see what happens okay partner types i'll just say plus json dot stringify because it's going to return me bunch of records in the collection so i'm just going to uh stringify the collection so it just appears on the screen else if 
in case of error I would like to show the error on the console for me console.log I'll just say error so let's get the error printed so from the property we have uh, body dot message so that's it so pretty much uh, we are done so let's try to save the file and deploy this to the org and uh, run let's see what happens so we'll go back to the page let's refresh Okay, once this is refreshed, let's go to inspect, let's go to console. And do we see any data return? Okay, let's try to clear the cache and then try. Click and then hold refresh for a moment and then do a hard reload. Yes, you can just see this, right? This is the data coming in from the database, correct? So again, it is an array of objects and each record is, it's, it's denoted, right? Or it's an object uh, right here, right? So in the, in the SOQL query, we are retrieving ID and name. So that's why you see ID as a key and the value, name as a key and the value. So basically the field name that we use in our SOQL query will automatically turn into a key and the value that is coming from the database becomes the actual data, yeah? So now this is where, you know, we have to, think so we know that if I just change uh, if I just you know simply try to bind this it won't work right because uh, the key is different if I want to bind this data back to the back to the HTML uh, it has to be a label and it has to be the key has to be label and this key has to be value correct so let's write a bit of uh, JavaScript okay and quickly turn this into the format that is required for the combo box so let's go back to the code and let's introduce a new uh, property partner types whole data all partners to bind in combo box yeah that's it so what I'll do is I will go right here I'll just say this dot partner types is equal to let me create an array okay and the very first object that I want to use is label and the label will have uh, let's say select partner type so that's the label and uh, the value will be empty perfect now I want to loop through, loop through data and change key. Object uh, keys. Okay, very simple to do it. So we will be using data dot for each. Um, yeah, that's the syntax for each and for each item. What we are going to do is let's create a object with the name partner type is equal to it's a, it's, a, it's an empty object and uh, so create a key with the name label which will be equal to the item dot so basically it is carrying the name right that's the if you go back to the console so this is what you know I'm just going to take it back take the value from here yeah take this put it right here similarly I want to set the ID or sorry value of the partner type object which is item dot ID so basically this is what I'm, I'm referring to so that's it now we have this temporary right uh, object created let's try to add this temporary object into partner types dot push of partner type that's it so now you will just see after this this loop runs you will just see all the partner types right here you know with the proper uh, uh, change in the keys so let's see how it works so let's try to print so we'll just say before and after and see what difference we're gonna see 
So this is the data that is coming from the database. And once this is modified, I'm just going to print it. Okay. I'll just say after json.stringify. Let's print uh, this dot partner types. Let's deploy the code and then see what happens. Let's go back and let's refresh this page. Right, let's go to inspect and then look at the console once. I think uh, the code is not at refresh. Let's clear cache and then reload. Right, let's uh, right click, go to inspect and then look at the console one more time. Now we can just see this, right? So this is the actual data that we received from the database and this is how it, it will look like now, right? Because we did a small, uh, we did write a small JavaScript, right, to change the key correct from this to this so now the data is in the right format that combo box can accept so I think now let's try to simply bind this data let's go back to the code just remove the code that is no longer needed and uh, back in the HTML uh, let's ensure that the option attribute it's taking the value from partner types that's all it is and placeholder, let's say select partner type because I would like to see partner type appearing here, select partner type instead of in progress. So I just use a placeholder as select partner type and I'll give name as well, select partner type, that's it. And now let's try to uh, deploy this code and then see how it's going to look like. Let's go back and let us refresh. Now you can just see this, right? All the data is coming from the database, right? So tomorrow if I add a new partner type, so again that partner type will just start appearing in the dropdown. So because the data is coming from the database, correct? So pretty much we managed to, we managed to get the data from the database, right? And then bind it to the combo box in a base component, right? So <clears throat> I think the next step is we would be focusing on giving functionality or adding functionalities to all these buttons. So for which we will learn some, we will use, you know, navigation mixing service and then we'll move forward. So yeah, let's focus on the next thing, which is our uh, navigation mixing service.